Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, firstly, before I start this, how many pharmacists are there in this group here? Quite a lot. How many are practicing pharmacists? Just a handful. Well, for the ones who are retired like me uh, from practicing pharmacy, uh, things have all changed and I'll show you why it is. Um, community pharmacy, which is the retail pharmacy scene, is one of the main, re main drug sp expenditure point for the NHS. NHS spends eight billion pounds of money on medicines that go through community pharmacies every year. And as you know, the, the service at a pharmacy depends on stock availability, his counter, OTC advice, and nowadays counseling and all the MURs, etc., that go with it. I'm just going to go through the agenda today. Firstly, before I go through this, I have to thank uh, two people, uh, well, one person and Avicenna who helped me put this thing together. Uh, there was a conference in Sri Lanka in April which I attended and John Gaddis, who is the sales director at Alliance Healthcare, um, had about four slides uh, which I've taken out of his presentation to put here because they were very easy to, to sort of uh, demonstrate. So thanks to these two people and the directors of Avicenna are here in the crowd. Well, my agenda is firstly to show you how does the supply chain work now. We're only talking about branded medicines, not about generics. Um, how has it changed? It's become much more complicated than what it was in sort of what I would call my time. Uh, I just ordered the stock, it arrived and I dispensed. It's no longer the same scenario. Uh, what does the future supply chain look like and really opportunities and threats uh, for the pharmacy and the patient. Now, the supply model before was a very simple one. There was a manufacturer who sold the stock to the wholesaler who then stocked to hospital pharmacists and doctors. The wholesaler owned the stock and the wholesaler controlled the discounts that the pharmacist got. It was a very simple model. Now, you've got the manufacturer who supplies to the wholesaler, but there are things called DTP, which is called direct-to-pharmacy schemes, where the manufacturer owns the stock and he uses the wholesaler as a logistic chain. And then people like Glaxo, Pfizer, Lundback, they use this uh, schemes. There is the traditional scheme where the, where the wholesaler still owns the stock. There are schemes called RWM, which is the reduced wholesaler's model, where you've got product-specific, channel-specific schemes. There is a scheme where you buy a certain amount uh, from the wholesaler, and there is also something called home care delivery now, which uh, wholesalers and uh, manufacturers get involved with directly. So it's a very complex model now than what it used to be in the old times. Um, now, this was the slide I took from John Gaddis, and if you see this slide, in 2007, five manufacturers went into this uh, scheme called direct-to-pharmacy scheme. 2008, five more, 2009, 11 more, and 2010, 15 more. And I mean, you can see the types of manufacturers involved. It's literally the whole of the branded industry is following one of these schemes. In 2012, I mean, I, there's just too many logos, I couldn't put them on, but if you, if you look at this uh, slide, this is the manufacturer, this is when the scheme came in place, and most of the schemes came in place in 2010, 11. 2010, there were 30 odd schemes. This is the type of scheme, so whether it's an agency, it's a reduced wholesaler scheme, or it's a DTP, uh, and these are the number of wholesalers involved in the scheme. 
If you look at some of the seeds, there is only one whole cell, some seeds there are two whole cells, some there are three whole cells, that's it. You can't get the stock from any other whole cells. And who owns the stock? In some places, the manufacturer owns the stock, wholesaler owns the stock, and this is who controls your discount at the pharmacy. In some cases, the manufacturer controls the discount. In some cases, the wholesaler controls the discount. So it's, and then these are, this is about 18 companies on here. There's another 18 on this list. Altogether, there are now 47 companies who are in this uh, control distribution scheme. And within this scheme, the different types of schemes, the first scheme is a sole scheme, which Pfizer and Lundbeck have. The other schemes are exclusive, which is agency plus reduced wholesale model, dual, and then there is dual with just one wholesaler, like no or no disk, will only supply to one wholesaler. Uh, and Pfizer would only do it with one wholesaler. So there, there is substantial complication in the supply chain now. And in fact, I looked at uh, some uh, IMS data, and just three manufacturers, Glaxo, Pfizer, and MSD, supply 30% of NHS, uh, or they are responsible for 30% of NHS money, 8 billion of it. Um, so there is, I mean, no doubt if this is all controlled, there is a problem in the supply chain. One of the, one of the problems is, and I think I'll come back to this slide later on. Um, uh, there's one slide that's missed out, which I've got a copy here. Why this uh, complicated model? The reason for this model is that there has been substantial patent expiries um, between 2011 and 2015. In fact, there will be 2.6 billion pounds worth of branded products going, into pay, uh, going out of patent. The other reason for this complicated scheme is some sort of a cost reduction exercise for the manufacturers. There is also the control of supply chain so that they can control where the stock is going. There is also transparency of where the stock is going and they get transparency of sales data through these schemes. One of the main reasons the branded company thinks the schemes are very good is because in today's world there is something called counterfeits. And this scheme controls the stock and controls <coughs> counterfeits. Um, and there is obviously another agenda with the manufacturers that it also controls the parallel imports and parallel exports out of, uh, out of UK. My next slide, uh, well, this slide that I was showing, is just showing the, the number of products that are going out of patent. In 2012, almost one billion pounds of branded products went out of patent. And the biggest one was the one in green, Lepitor, which just went out of patent last month. And there are still a lot of patent expiries happening till 2015. Therefore, what is happening in the marketplace? Obviously, like Claire said, independent pharmacists are suffering. They have a lot of problems in getting stocks, but when they get stocks, they actually lose money to dispense branded products. But today's model of dispensing for a retail pharmacist is such that he would, he would get a discount of about 7 to 8 percent on his branded products. But when he dispenses this prescription, the government takes a, between 8 to 11 percent clawback from his remuneration. Basically, the pharmacist will be dispensing a branded product at no profit. Uh, he gets a profit if he exports the drug. So this is one reason I think exporting is happening out of UK. And people who have read um, APPG report, it is available on the internet, but this report clearly indicates that one of the problems, one of the causes of drug shortage is exports. Uh, who's exporting, what is happening, obviously something that the 
the inquiry will look into, but this is one reason exports are happening is because dispensing in the UK is at a loss or no profit, so they're exporting to make profits. Obviously the patients are suffering and just like what we've heard uh, from Claire, the patients blame the pharmacists. And the pharmacists who are suffering are the independents. The multiple pharmacists don't seem to have a problem because most of the big wholesalers who are involved in the supply chain, Alliance Healthcare, Salesio and Phoenix, own the big chains in the country, Boots, Lloyds and Rollins. Um, and therefore, they have adequate supplies, but the independents have problems. And this is why IPF is very active in, in this area. And as independents are suffering, they're going out of business or they're selling out and they're actually selling out to multiples. And that for IPF is a big challenge that we need to stop independent pharmacies going into multiple hands because then I think the market will be very much polarized into one supply chain.